thanks for staying with us. So, the story of how Governor El Rufai of Kaduna State withdrew his son, his beloved son, Silent. from public school was all over social media. If you could recall, last year, the governor enrolled him in one of the northern Nigerian oldest public schools with pride and confidence. Mm -hmm. However, there, was, there were mixed reactions from Nigerians when he withdrew his young man. And he has responded since that news broke out that, listen, he was, it was unsafe for his son to remain in that school. When he came out with that information, parents now went for him. Ah, so you have information that uh, our school is unsafe and you carried your, your child. What are your thoughts on this? Please call us on 081-270-53687, You can also send us messages on YouTube and Facebook. We'd love to hear your comments. So what are your the general thoughts first? The fact that he withdrew his son from the public school. I mean, we all cheered him on last year when we heard that. His son actually attended uh, a public school. What are your thoughts? Let me start with Lucy. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for me, I personally think that when he enrolled the child into the school, there was a lot of public adulation. He received all the praises. People were happy. He sort of brought hope back to uh, the parents in that uh, state, Kaduna State, that least public school, for the governor to put his child in a public school, that means there is hope that, you know, the public schools will now start measuring up. Because I heard that by, before he even brought the school, uh, brought the son to the school, they had to do some form of renovations in the school to make, bring it up to standard a bit for the child to be able to attend. And so it gave a lot of parents hope that, okay, maybe something good will come out of this uh, public school system, and everybody applauded him. Now, he got information that something was about to happen. He was being it. He actually got information that he was being a target. That, uh, uh, and according to the stories, they said that um, they had intercepted about two, uh, two times kidnappers that were coming to abduct the son because they wanted to pay him back. Maybe you said you will not pay ransom. So if we take this, your son, let's see if you will not pay ransom. So he decided to remove his, 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 uh, the child silently from the school after COVID-19. So when every other person you know, came back to school, they were expecting the son to resume and they realized that he wasn't coming. <laughs> so that silently was where I had the problem. You could have said, okay, I had intelligence that something is about to happen and it's targeted at me and I want to take this child away. Mm. So it, it shows that you have respect for the people because you've, you've raised their hopes that if you can be here, that means the school is worthy enough to have their own children. Now you got an information and silently, so that silence okay. Okay. is where point, I had a point, problem. Point taking. Mara, let me come to you. Yeah. I mean, because it's, so it's easy to look at this from the side of the governor. Mm. But nobody's looking at this from the side of the mother. Of yeah. the father. And me, I'm on the side of the mother from the very yeah. beginning. <laughs> yeah. So I understand Nigerians, um, the sentiment, really. Um, because you're looking at it like, so for those of us that do not have the choice, that cannot take our own children out and put them somewhere safer. You know, what does that mean? What are you trying to say to us? So I get that sentiment. It, feel, it, it really it feels like a betrayal, especially for the parents of the students in that school as well. Like, oh, so there must have been something that is coming to us, and you just quietly saved your own child. So I get that. But as a mother, hmm, from the beginning, I just thought it was a bit, I thought it was a bit on, what's the, I'm trying to look for a nice word. You know, like, it was not right. It was not proper. It was not well thought out. Because you're a man in a certain position, a man in a strategic position. And all over the world, people who are in strategic positions, leaders of countries, and, um, you know, yeah, their children are put in places that first their safety is, is paramount. It's just normal that people will target people like that. They will target your family and whatever they think, and wherever they think there's a loophole, they'll take, they'll take advantage of that. I remember when Prince Harry joined the British Army and went mm. to Afghanistan. It was quiet until he was done with his own exercise and had left before we knew that he was part of that exercise. Because what will happen? Apart from targeting him, you also put the whole crew at risk. You put that whole school at risk when you say that there's a sitting governor's son in a school like that, mm. especially at a time like this. And it was state now, funds you used to, 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 to yes. get you out. So now, secondly, for me, I hope it teaches the governor to be more sensitive. 
to the plight of people. Because he now understands, because it shows, it also proves to me that if his son had been kidnapped, he would have paid ransom. He would have. I mean, no, you were moved, no, no, he would have. You were no, moved no. to the point that you felt he was unsafe and you moved him. Yeah. That same mindset, you will pay ransom. And that's, that's your, what, well, that's, that's your own me. interpretation. That's my own yeah. interpretation. But, yeah. And I say, mother, I don't know how he slept oh, with the mother in the house constantly. Because I'm like, you're using my son to prove a political, yeah. uh, po political point. Don't use my child for something like that. Okay, but the, in the report, they, they, he didn't say that there was harm coming to the school. He was targeted specifically at his own son. That because I have said this, so my own son is at risk, not the school. So, yeah, but the school no, has no, the collateral no, 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 damage. I'm, I'm looking at a different angle of it. Mm. That yes, he he can make that defense that mm. I didn't have any issue. The, the issue, the school, the school was on the problem. My son was a target, and because of that, I quietly removed yeah. him. Yeah. So for me. The son still puts the school as a target because the kidnappers did not know the son is no longer there, so they will still easily focus on that school, they thinking that they are watching. He might still put the school, but you, you see, for me, the the first thing is there are a few characteristics of a leader. A leader, and we, what we need in this country right now is leadership, and there are a few characteristics that we must use as metrics to measure how well our leaders are. One is sacrificial leadership. You cannot lead a country out of, out of crisis without willing to make sacrifices for your country. Exemplary leadership. We hailed him thinking he was an exemplary leader, doing something that would cause um, um, positive change within the educational sector. He did a behind the scene U-turn and did not inform anybody. Mm -hmm. That's the then the idea of servant leadership. Then the idea of a service-driven leader. All these characteristics, do we have them in our leaders? Like when we are, when we observe our leader, what do we see? That we we always have to come back to remind ourselves what are the quality leaders we've had? Leaders who put the, um, who don't feel they are more important than other people. One of the biggest challenges we have in Nigeria is that there are no opportunities for people. If I'm not seeing opportunity here, then I'll go to where opportunities are. If I'm not safe, I'll go to where safety is. So we are migrating our best hands everywhere. And the leaders we have are not willing to make that sacrifice of, I am willing to pay the price for this country to work. I don't mind I die. I will make this country work. We have leaders that say, I cannot come and kill myself. But you can live your life funded by the resources of a country you're not willing to die for. Okay, they will wait. be there. So I, I get that. Yeah. But let, let, let us compartmentalize. This man is a father a governor, mm -hmm. a husband, he's playing various roles. Yeah. Yeah. So as a role as a, as a governor, he feels that, listen, I am already invested in the education. I'm going to put my child in this because I'm going to ensure that these schools are, are doing well. Yeah. But when there's a security issue that can affect your child, you put on the cap of a father. Yeah. As a father, what do you do? You're a father because, to one. No, no, no. You're, you're a father you're to your child. You're meant to be a father to yes, all. But you're a father to your child first. first. Mm. Let's, 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 yes. let's, not, let's put yourself in his shoes. Yes, mm. first. It's easy for us from here. Oh, he's our father. Mm. Mm. Not he's our father. first. Though. A so father to his child. Yeah. And what he owes his child is safety. Yes, yes just yes. like you said, you're right, baby. The, 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 the gesture of putting him in public school was good. But when his child's safety specifically was at risk, he had to yeah. take his child. As yeah. long as we are all taking care of our own children, the country would continue to collapse. Yeah, so no, that's no, no, the, no, no. the thing for okay. me, okay, the no. thing for me is, um, we, we, I've always said here that if we want to change, especially in the educational sector, we have to make it that those people at the helm of affairs do not have another option because you have chosen to serve. So if you have chosen to serve, you will not be able to go outside for medical care. You will not be able to take your children outside for schooling. That's outside the country for schooling. It has to be here so that you can deploy the resources to make it better. Because at first, like you said, you are a father first to your child. And you, the way we are here, you put your own family first Selfish. before other people. And we're still there. But if we put those laws in place, it will help us bring the resources together and build the country that's mm. one so people were excited that he was showing example by putting his son there but when he now heard that a security issue now th that school particularly they said they had brought down the perimeter fencing the school was open people could walk in boys were coming in to play football and all, all of that the school was not safe it would be unfair yeah. For him not to take his son okay, away. we have to go in a break we okay. see. Okay. I, I want to make some it's I want to be very very children, clear yeah, yeah. So at the point, you see, okay, when we come back, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll take this angle. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still on this issue of Governor El Rufai. 
I know it's always easy for us to see things from one side. But mm. if we look at it on the flip side, you know, there is an angle that the governor was also looking at the safety of the school at large. Huh? Saying that my son being a target, being in the school, might not be safe for the rest of the school. Yeah. Let me take him out so that you guys will be as safe. I can always find a way to keep my son safe. But the school itself might not be safe because my son is there. So that's another angle to look at it. But my question to you is that when a governor removes his son from a, school, from a public school, because somebody was sending, sending me a message here that he gave people hope, but did that mean that he stopped funding education? Did that mean he stopped paying their salaries? Did that mean that he, found, he stopped um, the support the government was giving to education because he has removed his son? So why are we automatically yeah. saying the removal of the son automatically means that, the oh, there's no more focus on yeah. education? Why do we have that sentiment? Is that, yeah. is that the most convenient sentiment to have? Or is. is that the real objective of the, objective of the situation? <laughs> so that's what I was even going to go next, which is I do not think that taking out his son for security reasons automatically means that education for all that particular school, the standard of education has dropped. Many people are taking their children out of school in the northern areas. Many schools have closed down. Mm -hmm. And they are not closing down because of the standard of education. They're closing down because of security. So these are two different issues that we're yeah. talking about. It does not automatically mean that public schools are not, or that particular public school mm. is no longer a good school. But because that school has become a target, a mm. student has become a target, and of course, you know, eventually, by yeah, by extension, the school will become a target. Mm. Imagine when they try to come into the school to pick up that boy. Mm. Kidnappers are going to just shoot, shoot at everybody, yeah. students mm. and um, teachers. Okay. And imagine as a parent thinking, because you put your child in my child's school, that's why my child has been kidnapped yeah. today. So you that know, that's another we'll conversation we'll be having. Let me this call. Hassan, are you there? Hello, Hassan. Uh, uh, please, uh, let me put this in a, in a proper perspective, so okay. that everybody will understand. Okay. A lot of people don't know that the son of Empire is the target of those values. That's number one. Number two, I remember that everybody is the chief security officer of Kaduna State. Yeah. And the only way, those, the only source of making chunks of money by the bandits is for government, state government, to pay ransom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we all knew he put his foot down not to pay in order to bring an end the That's number two. Number three, a lot of people don't understand how to So it's very easy for people to criticize because you don't understand the language of the bandits. Their own target is terrifying to break this guy and make him to give them money from the coffer of state government in which he put his foot down not to do. Number two contribution today is this. Please let us forget about governors talking about iPhone and what have you. It's a distraction. Let them, con let them concentrate on giving us the dividend of democracy. All these issues of anybody, iPhone, governors talking, it's a distraction. Let them face the realities on the ground. We have much more problems on our hands. Dollar is far further than something now. And our economy is an import dependent economy. Let all of us sit up and give us the dividend of economy. A lot of divided rules tend to put money. Thank you very much, Hassan. Thank yes. Um, I like, I, I, of course, what Hassan is saying would make sense, except the fact that three children were shot dead because the governor did not pay ransom. And three families that have raised their children to the point of university just had the Lost misfortune them. of being in Nigeria. So, we come to me, Nigeria not happen to you. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. If you have chosen to become the governor, many politicians will say, how much is the salary safe? What are, they, what are we even enjoying in office? Then why are you there? Nobody forced you. Nobody put your name on the ticket. Nobody went, forced you to go and campaign. You said you could solve the problem. You saw that Nigeria had lots of problems. You went to campaign. You carried yourself and your family. Many people vote for you because we thought you could help solve our problem. Then something happens and you are willing to sacrifice lives because you feel, see, at the end of the day, until we get it right with leadership, every other thing will continue to go bad. And, and until we see sacrifice on the part of our leaders, it is not going to be, it will cost us a whole lot to save this Let country. Let me show I understand you, Tokwe. He doesn't want to take money from the coffers of the government, okay. uh, money that they don't even have. 
Remember, allocation has totally dropped. Yeah. He doesn't have money. He hasn't paid salaries. He sacked 4,000 teachers because I can't afford salaries. Now you're saying, pay ransom from this same coffer that there's no money. Yes, I understand the exigencies of the situation. This child, and, you know yes, so that's the sentiment. If it was my child, I would beg him to pay ransom. But you understand where that you need to. So you say on his head, um, lies the head. The head. Yeah. But how in that kind of balance? What's the what, focus? What, 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 what do we do? What do we do? What does a what leader do, do when you are faced with crisis? Let me and ask you that question. Suffering. What would you have done? So for me, at the end of the day, borrow money from Lagos State. We need, to get, we, need we need to get those children out. <laughs> no, no, no. Would so you have you removed your child or so not? To you, you have as to get Would you borrow from Lagos State? Let's ask direct questions. I will not apply to become a governor for a problem I cannot solve. Yeah, but so I have said is that this ransom that we are discussing should have been paid before any child got dead. Yeah. You can now, it is, can we say we cannot trace money? Hey, hey. No, you are paying people money hey. every time. You so, cannot trace the so, money. So, is it, is it that they cannot, when money goes out, the money is kept for years, that nobody yes. spending that money? Yes. Um, Maybe they are not, now, now you are answering the but question. But I'm saying yeah. you pay and you follow the money. We yeah. are not ready to pay. We're not ready to solve the problem because our leaders have excuse. They have options. Okay, Their child taking. can go out. Point. They can go I for that money. I'm going to take I loved that when he finally silently removed the child yeah. that he fortified that school. He protected the other children. Because the truth yeah. is, no. like somebody mentioned, the, uh, the uh, um, bandits may not even know that the child has been removed. Yeah. And even if they know, they may still decide to come to that school. Yeah. Your, there's, it's there's on record, yes, somewhere. that your child mm -hmm. was in this school and we have come. Let us see if he will pay ransom or yeah. not. So whether he has removed the child or not, he has endangered that school. Okay, the school is still open in parameters. Mm. They should fortify that place and put security guards in that school. Okay. That's well, what well, I expected. Thanks also. for calling. <laughs> yes, hello. Good You're morning. live. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm on the side this morning. Henry Fai should just come out and tell us that he has failed Cardinal State. Because he, when he put his thumb there, there was a publicity stunt that, hey, this is the almighty uh, governor that feels the pain of a common man. And when the tide falls, he, he secretly removed his son. So the son of a poor man in Kaduna State, does it matter? The, the children that they were being kidnapped in those universities, does their life matter? Kaduna government should come out and say, Kaduna people, I'm very sorry, I failed you guys. I campaigned on turning Kaduna to be the second um, mega economic security state. But I have failed. Let him come out Amara, and tell us he has Amara, failed. Amara, let me stay on you for a second. What on the okay. flip side where he was thinking about the safety of the children in that school? And now took out his child because he knew that, hey, if I leave my child here, if bandits come, they take everybody else. I'll rather handle my own child privately. Do you think that might be what he's thinking? For the no. safety of the other children? No, no I will not take that. Okay. So, you know why I will not take that? Yeah. Because Nigerian politicians don't think that way, Murayo. Okay. Nigerian oh, okay. politicians do things for publicity stunts. Okay. See, I was one of the few people that know that what everybody did last year was just publicity stunts. Okay. It will not last. Even if, even if this security has not said, doesn't have, don't have security to station, Everybody will still remove his right. Thank you very much, Amalara, for that. Yeah. So, let us, thank you very much. So, last year, he put his son, or we, we, this, we hear he put his son. Mm -hmm. Nigerians said, uh, publicity stones. He removed the son. Ah, uh, we told you. Stones. So, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> this is a new hand. Let me go on a break. We okay. have to come back. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> hey. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.